everybody we are again on stage nine enterprise d recreation now i enjoyed the walk around and i noticed that there were things that i overlooked so we're gonna go and see what other things we can do you know do a few other things on the stage nine enterprise d recreation join me as we go back in and as usual Arcane infinity helm Set course for like and subscribe. Punch it. O'Brien, good, good man, top of the morning to ya. How's Keiko? Yoshi? Good, good, good. I, I won't ask about, yeah, we, we all know. So we're gonna head somewhere. But, uh, well, I, I kinda wanted to continue my discussion. Because, um,. Well, yeah, it it should be a game. That's just the truth of the matter. I mean, uh, 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 I don't mean to just jump right into it, but this should be a game. If well, that was weird. Hmm. If not for just this whole thing, wow. You just try some new things here and uh, I haven't seen this area of the ship before this is actually really nice I like the blue carpeting the music's pretty good too yeah. pilots lounge the lounge for the pilot oh wow so oop, little glitchy but this is the lounge for the shuttle bay Oh, we have a number of shuttles down there. Different classes, it looks like. I've seen those before. Those are type... Those are type 1s. Look like those are type 6 shuttles. Is that a type 2 or type 3 over there? Whoa, what happened? What just happened? Oh. It... Okay. I guess he... Oh, if you... Yeah, it's, it's, it has, it's having a real hard time loading the world. There are a lot of things going on. I think it's because uh, all of this here and down there. And there's another lounge over there, it looks like. Okay, let's make our way down there. We'll see if we can increase our speed a little. There we go. So that's the piloting. Okay. Flight planning. And it's just, uh, okay, I guess no one wants to plan a flight with them. And that's the way to get us down there. That's the turbo lift down there, but we can just take the stairs. You rarely have stairs in, in Starfleet, so that's just going to take a... Wow. Wow. And there's a bell here. Oh, okay. The Enterprise D has a bell. I guess it was christened in 2364. The wood looks good. They, 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 they should have shown this somewhere on the show. But this is what you expect the shuttle bay to, to kind of be. This is, wow, look at all these shuttles in here. There's a runabout over there, hold on. 
so we're going to take a look. Let's, let's do a little bit of running. It's, so I've seen this shuttle in the show. This is the Tyson, apparently. Shuttlecraft 88. I'm guessing we can't have access to it. It doesn't look like the way in. Does it even have? No, it doesn't. I have seen this shuttle before. I can't remember what show or anything. It definitely doesn't have a way in. So let's, let's get our run on. More stairs. I mean, there literally is a hallway around this entire thing that's already made could be a game in and of itself look at this what is this is this a worker bee shuttle each one of these things at least different each different model could be a game you can have a thing where you have to go out on the ship after a battle and repair certain sections of the ship with this or and and different missions where you go someplace you just got to grab a couple things that you use different shuttles for different mission types you know I'm not sure if these shuttles can open. No, these can't. But we're going to look at this runabout. I mean, wow. I did not know the Ohio. I did not know that the Enterprise had its own. No, it doesn't. This is on loan from another ship. I wish I knew what ship that was by its registry. So it's NC7002005. Wow, that's some pretty big Pussar collectors. So, no. So, can we have access? To, I don't think we can. Which is a shame because it looks as though there is definitely an interior in this thing. It doesn't look like there are any buttons I can press here. We have no crouch. Oh, yes. Yes, we do have access to the runabout. Nice. The back section of the runabout. Maybe we hit a button. That's another door to go out the other side. But we, uh, well, we can look at the bridge of it. Okay. It looks pretty nice. Milky Way Galaxy. And this is the EM radiation analysis. Okay. But we can't go there. Can we go? Oh, this is how we get into the bridge. We walk through the transporter pad. Well, they have some sounds playing, but um, okay. All right. Well, we had a look about, a walkabout, and a runabout. Alright, so that is the shuttle bay. Just going to be a little bit curious. Oh, well, I have a feeling. Okay, it is. Can we go in there? Yes, we can. Can we go in here? Yes, we can. And so we can actually walk around the entire walkway. Huh. Well, that's cut off. So it's, it literally is just walk this walk this way talk this way that type of thing and then we get access to a turbo lift that doesn't do anything okay but we did get to get to run around the thing and look through the window hey that's not special but I mean I guess it is seeing as what it is it's, it's a defunct project that basically this is this is the end of it right here just people having a look at it because you know well because of the the the, the not, I would say, because of the reason that I want to talk about things today, but similar. It's it's part of it. And, well, you know, you know why we're here. Because there is not a AAA Star Trek game, and there needs to be a AAA Star Trek game. It's, um... It's too well known of an IP for there not to be a Star Trek game which is odd you know with all of the details and lore about I mean 
yeah, I would say over the years there definitely have been a lot of Star Trek games. But I'll have to say, as someone who's you know a fan of Star Trek and a gamer for more than 35 years, there's one to two, maybe three Star Trek games that are either worth anything to play other than that. It's mostly just fan service. And and, and that's the sad powder part about it. Because Well, we 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 need one, you know. See See, what I think is there should be a triple A Star Trek game. That's my statement. Now there are problems with that. Problems that we need to address before we even think about there being, oh, okay, this is the operator so easily. Before we can think of it being, and well, what are the first big problems? The first big problems that, that we have, why we really don't have one, sadly to say, is Paramount. It, it really is all about them and, and what they do with their IP and what they will allow to be created. This being evidence in and of itself. Now, not to throw any shade on them, but games are not necessarily on their radar. It's not nothing that, that, that Paramount actually thinks about, really. It's a secondary at best, more third thought. It's more how much money can we make, how much money do we have to spend on getting this series out, this, that, and the other, and how do they also protect their, their uh, IP, right? And so... Even if they, and when they do decide to make games, they usually are implemented in the way that you know they they want or they allow, and then it's just not picked up by the the, the fans and gamers generally. And that would be the thing that we need most is for gamers to pick it up, because if a if a game is made and it's just there to serve the fans where the, the, the Star Trek fans are not enough to support a game in and of itself it, it, it needs uh, huh, this is the battle bridge it needs support from just regular people who just like kind of watch the series don't really watch the series but like want to play a cool game like the like the visuals they like the you know all the technology and all that and, and there are lots of people that like the technology and the look of Star Trek. They're just not so much into the storyline. Which, of those people who are gamers, that would be great. You know, I'm pretty sure they'd love to get their fingers on a really cool Star Trek game. Shoot phasers, fly ships. And that's where you say it, 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 it wouldn't be implemented properly if just done simply by Paramount. So... It's it's more like, hmm, it's two quarters or his quarters has two different interests. It's more like, you know, someone special has to be there to do it properly and, and convince them to allow them to have the ability to, to go places with the IP in the storyline of the game. You know, that would be entertaining for people. Um, turbo lift from Turbo Lift. Now, the second problem that we have is the game industry itself is not really vying for, like, opportunities to do a Star Trek game. People aren't really, like, bugging Paramount and they're all saying, oh, I really want to make one. I couldn't wait to get a game. No, no one's trying to right now. No one's looking to do it. So, no, people just hanging out in Picard's quarters. Nice. And and, and that's that's the problem, you know. I mean, and, 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 and like I was saying, often when there are Star Trek games made, the, 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 the place making them rarely puts the, the real effort into it. And then a lot of times if they do, they stick so hardcore to some particular way of doing it. Oh, we, you we can hear that it, it doesn't necessarily, it's the only thing on this deck is Picard's quarters and someone just hanging out in his quarters. That must be his, his, uh, his porter. That must be what it is, you know? And the games just haven't been met with the greatest reviews and people haven't been all over their backs about getting them out there. So that's another problem we have. And I would say one of the third problems that we have, well, 
any studio that does make it, they're just like going through the numbers, copying files and and and, or, and saying this is what they're going to do and this that and the other. I mean, they're not necessarily doing it with the same passion that someone who does, say, a Star Star Wars game would do. You know, you can almost see that they found it in a lot of just about most of them. You know, or maybe it's it's a matter of. Uh, Someone tried to do it really good, and they were told by Paramount that you can't do this storyline or you can't depict this character. So we we really don't know. We'd have to dig all into that, you know. But the case that I'm, I make is that, you know, we need a single player or a multiplayer game. Now, with today's market, it would be a tough go to do a, a multiplayer game, and that's because oh, this is the computer core. Hmm. Oh, this would be a cool computer core. The problem with trying to do a multiplayer game is, well, you have things like microtransactions. Hmm. Yeah. People are not pretty happy about microtransactions. And then you have DLC that breaks up uh, the content so other people can't play with their friends or this, that, and the other when content is, is, is paid for and bought. You know, so... Ladders for nowhere? Oh no, just to get up to that stuff, okay. Those must be data sets and things like that. And well then you have also the thing with the um, multiplayer. It's I mean you have some places some some games, their multiplayer is pretty good because you know there's oh, and there's nobody in this one. Because there's pretty good detail on the models and the characters and all that, but comparatively to a single player game, the, the, the details for the multiplayer compared to the single player would be lowered for optimization. So people can, can move around faster and, and lo worlds could load faster. You know, you can join game modes a lot easier if the characters aren't too detailed, you know, and if you aren't. You know, if it's a third-person game or something. So a multiplayer game would be good for multiple people playing in the world together. But we would lose a lot of detail in multiplayer, generally, depending on what studio make it and, and the way in which they're going to implement their multiplayer. I think we've been here before. We want to go places new. Now, with single-player, well, with single-player... You have a chance to really, really, uh, well, let's, let's, let's go someplace. Stellar cartography. I've never been there. I can't see. Oh, God. The, the, the run and walk are just, uh, toggles, so it's, it's kind of hard to remember. There you are. Which one you're on? It's on starboard side. Nice. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, and see, with with single player, I think it just loads. That's what it is. You hit the thing, and it just starts loading that world, and it going through all this until it loads up. So with, with single player, the, the, with, you have the possibility for higher detail in, in, in character qualities. You know, the, the, the detail for your characters and the models in which they're in would be much better in single player. And the story could be much more detailed and intricate. Also allowing you to have uh, multiple detail, uh, multiple, uh, what do you call that? Multiple DLC, you know, with a single player game. And see, with online games, it would require it to have online access and there to be people to play with every time you want to play it. If a game dies down in uh, popularity, then you really can't play the game. And if a game, say, is going to be something like a sleeper hit and people are going to come to it much later, well, if it's an online game that doesn't receive enough player base, then it'll be canceled. And then when the audience that really would play it, maybe they weren't around or, or didn't have a chance to play the game when it first launched, then that wouldn't happen. Well, with a single-player game, that would happen. 
a game could come out and and maybe it, it came out at the wrong time. That happened to a number of games that have been released and they get released at the wrong window and another game I overshadowed them and it was an gr- amazing game. Titanfall was one of them. You know, and, and just it slept because other giant titles were being released at the same time. So, but with the multiplayer, if you don't hit that window, you're gone. Hmm. Crew Lounge. I think it's pretty big. Oh, no, not pretty big. Just two interests. Three interests. Yeah. Hmm. Too bad we can't see. Or make a drink. All right. Um, we did do main shuttle bay upper. Observation lounge. Arboretum. Let's try... Have we been to sick bay? We've been in the cell control way back. Let's try sick bay. We might be feeling a little ill because we don't have a multiplayer Star Trek game. Now, as we go to sick bay, I am feeling sick. Feeling sick going to sick bay, the bay of the sick. It looks like a lot of people are sick today. Yeah, well, we don't have a AAA Star Trek game, so it's kind of easy to be sick. Yeah, you heard me. So, me, myself, say I were to have the ability to go ahead and do it myself. Well, it would be a, 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 a AAA, single-player, and multiplayer Star Trek game. It would be uh, detailed and supported with updates, maybe three to four DLCs over a period of maybe five to seven years possibility of a second game depending on how it uh fared on the multiplayer aspect of it yeah huh. what's on this deck you know and um would same thing with multiplayer it would have uh matching multiplayer and single player dlc so when there's a dlc that comes out there's a single player and a multiplayer aspect of it there's not many games that do that, but that that would be something that I, I would definitely want, and and see an, another thing that I would want, and it, it would be mod support for multiplayer and single player. So there could be vanilla gameplay, and then modded gameplay. Say say the modded community when it adds things to the games that 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 we haven't even thought of. Say say like uh say the game has all these cool things, and then say we didn't include a Borg sphere or something, a certain one, and they someone mod one in there. They want to do like a, their own different versions of like that would be great. Oh, sick! Well, it's just tucked away back here, Mr. Gawa. Now, I mean, now for the single player, I would think something like, "Hey, where's Crusher?" I was thinking of doing something completely new and completely different, something that has never been seen or thought of before. Uh, well. No one's ever thought of a single-player campaign game in a Star Trek world or universe where you're not playing as the humans. You're playing as something like maybe Klingons or or Romulans or something, but not playing as like, a, you know, I mean, I would guess playing as the Vulcans would basically have you playing as like um, similar to Starfleet. It, it really wouldn't be much of a different if you're playing as a Vulcan. You know, I mean, an Andorian would be be kind of cool playing as a Cardassian. I, I I would I think it would be more fun to play as one of the um, one of the factions that's usually at the opposition of Star Trek, Starfleet. Some like uh, like the Klingons, or the, the Romulans, or I mean, the Cardassians would be kind of weird, but I guess the Cardassians. It, it's it's just another form of the Romulans to me. It's just that we got to see more of the Cardassians because of the series. Now, me myself, I'd I'd, I'd say like a 
a single player campaign where you play as a Klingon you start off as a Klingon you go through your warrior training and all that stuff and I mean it'll be similar to like a, a lot of games where you start off as a soldier and you have to rank up and learn the basics yeah that's how it would be and then once you learn rank up then you start being a, a soldier and then you get on type of a, a ship a Roman warbird or a was that a K7s or something like that? D7 series or something like that? No. And it's it has its own language. That's one thing that's cool. So you can do subtitles and all types of things in the Klingon language. And then we have the ship models. And these are things that, that, that we've slept on, which would be great for a campaign, a nice detailed campaign. You can even show different versions in different areas on Kronos, you know. And... The, the whole idea that, that it'll be a different one from you being a Starfleet officer, you'd be a Klingon warrior. And that would be a, a, a like a single player campaign where you're playing as a Klingon would be nice, dark and gritty. You do some ray tracing, some detailed atmospheric smoke and water. You know, they have the Targ, they have the battles with the Bathlet. I mean, it's it would be an amazing game. And and during the game you can come across Starfleet and fight Starfleet and all this other stuff. Is this guy still down here partying? He's still down there partying. Oh somebody else. But they're getting their Gundam on. And the Gangnam style. Look at him. Go ahead, get, get into it. They're just dancing away. Yeah, I, I I can't like uh, spitball a a, 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 a a what you call a, a campaign off myself. Oh, I could. I probably like it could come up with a campaign really really fast. But I mean, you kind of get the gist. Maybe we could um, we could workshop a, a, a couple ideas in the comments. You know. Oop, oop. Oh, I, I just I walked into a shield that I wasn't supposed to walk into. Oh, one of these guys walked into a shield they weren't supposed to walk into. See, because if I go over there again, it won't make the same sound, will it? No. It just was a coinky dink that I was doing it over here while he was over there. But so, yeah, I'd say let's, let's just do that. You know, oh, oh, we can open things up. I didn't know that. Oh, 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 oh just open it up. We'll just take a look then. So we have a bunch of Starfleet engineering tools here well let's let's just take a look we can't zoom oh we can zoom huh all this time wait a second we can zoom okay that's the same like the other one but yeah let's go back to this Now, it, it, it was made aware to me in the comments of my last video that we can cause a warp core breach, and I didn't know that. So, no, we can't do it there. So, I figure, which is why I've been clicking places while in here and talking. One of these places is going to click it. Maybe I have to click them in an order or something. But, yeah, single player campaign. Being a Klingon, or or or, or some, I mean, you let me know what 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 single player campaign would you like to play? Would you like to do the same thing like Star Trek Online and do a Starfleet officer, or like in every Star Trek game where you play as a Starfleet officer, or would you like to play one different? Oh, and maybe blow up Starfleet, you know, or maybe a, a mirror universe. That would be really easy. Okay, let's get out of here before we go. Okay, I need you guys to evacuate engineering. Uh, we have a coolant leak. Coolant leak. We have a coolant Warning. leak in a starboard nacelle. Oh, oh, crap. Everybody, evacuate engineering now. Get to your shuttle pods. Warning. Oh, crap. I'm sealing engineering. I'm going to try to eject the core. Uh, Warning. Warp core breach. Ejection procedures failed. Warning. Well, it's been nice with you guys. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. As always.
and we are back. But just to say goodbye. So nice seeing you, O'Brien. So yeah, that that's been it. You guys take it easy. I will catch you in the next one. I'm going to head to the bridge, and I want you guys to set course for like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. We'll continue this discussion. We'll flesh out more ways to make a AAA Star Trek game. Maybe we'll come up with a complete whole story and everything, and maybe they won't be able to ignore it. Other than that, you guys be good. Take it easy. <laughs>